What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, Beehive Radio, shout in. Stepping in the building, I got my fam off in this thing. A hood rich legend, man. I'm talking about my dog, the legend himself, Swamp Izzo. What what's up, good what with up, it, boss? I, I'm not a legend. I'm still start oh, right there. Oh, nigga, you better stop it right, right now. Uh-oh, Swamp, not we ain't about to go here. I'm just getting started. Swamp, you been putting it down forever. It's my first time seeing you. It's my first time. Come, now, I, I knew you for a long time. Yeah. It's my first interview with you. So I'm just getting, I'm, a, I'm new to this. I'm going to let you slide with that swamp. I'm going to let you slide <laughs> with it. But when it comes to being a legendary record breaker in the A-Town, your name is up there with them boys now. Thank you. I'm not going to allow you to not have that Thank one. you. Thank you. New record, though, man. Yeah. Three phones. Yes. Going yes, crazy in these streets, real man. Life, three cell phones. <laughs> he done came with three phones. <laughs> three cell phones, real life. Talk to me, man. Man, just me and Future, um, I, I like to say rekindling our relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? We yeah. getting back in the studio like we was in the beginning. Because mm -hmm. I was just around um, one of those DJs in the beginning of us when he was really starting to take it serious. Yeah. So we just getting back to that element in the studio just working. And we just came up with a couple of records. I really, really like this one. Yeah. I really wanted to go with this one. I got a, he gave me a bunch of big records. Mm -hmm. Like, Records that probably would have outshattered my growth. So I wanted to start somewhere. Uh, I wanted to start with the streets. Yeah. So I, this was the, my first record I felt like I need to make my introduction as an artist, DJ, slash putting out records. Talk to me about making that transition from stone cold, hard cold DJ to producer, artist, record breaker, and producer now. I kind of, um, to be honest, I kind of was already doing it by, the, by mistake. Okay. Working with Thug, yeah. working with Scooter, working with um, my guys, Petter Spanky, yeah. um, Scoob, all these guys. I've been, I've been already formulating songs yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. So I really like was already doing it. So I just took that same idea back, did it the same thing with Future. How do you feel going on your press run, going all over the place, though, now, Swamp, letting these folks know what time it I'm is? I'm excited because still to this day, a lot of people don't know too much about me. A lot of people don't know as, as much as you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's seeing my work and seeing me grind out here and seeing me hustle. So a lot of people really don't know. So just expressing and just telling people who I really am behind the scenes and who I that was me <laughs> in them in them special events. And exactly. that was me and they was yeah. like, Oh yeah, I remember that that drop, that Swamp Izzo drop. Yeah, that was me. So in the face with the name. What was it that got you into DJ in the begin with though, man? Um my brothers my uh -huh. brothers just sitting around emulating them, watching them, and then always um, Saturday Night Live, Apollo. Yeah. Just, you know, really just Apollo sitting around with my cousins, Crystal and Christopher, just sitting around with the twins. Yeah. And we just excited. Just as kids. Yeah. Babies. Apollo was everything. So I, could, I didn't want to rap. Yeah. I knew I couldn't rap. Yeah. I wanted to rap. I did try rapping. Mm -hmm. I just knew I wasn't good at it. I was one of those artists <laughs> that was just, I know I'm not good at it. I, I fake swap. it, but yeah. I know it was good. But I always liked that guy back there that just did this with his hands. Facts. And always, and the people would listen to him. I was like, nobody's intrigued. Nobody's excited about that guy. Yeah. Nobody in the room is paying no attention to that guy. Mm -hmm. And I just always went against the grain. I said, I want, I want to do that. Hooking up with the Hood Rich fam. How the hell did you and Scream link up, man? Man, me and Scream linked up through Rip. Like, I'm just Going always in the Rip. clubs on, yeah. on the west side, just doing Crucial and just doing Coco Locos and all these clubs and just running into Rip all the time. He was like, bro, <laughs> you a definition of what we rep. Exactly. The Our goal is to get rich. I think you need to really rock out with my brother Scream. And I was like, I'm always hearing him yeah. scream through D4L. Yeah. I'm always hearing him do these mixtapes. But I'm so in mind of, I'm I'm coming to take over. Yeah. I'm never even trying to give Scream the <laughs> conversation. Cause I'm, he, he's, every conversation is Scream. Yeah. Every, I want to do something like, what can I go? I want to do it. Nah, Scream is doing my mixtape. I'm like, bro, <laughs> come on, man. Who is this guy Scream? I need to get him out of the way. So me and Rip Link and me and Scream Link and Scream was, we always joke about it. I was like, yo, I'm on Lane. He's like, yo, come get this. I'm about to go on the road with Shorty Low. Yeah. The end of D4L. So I did the end of D4L tours. Yeah. And, and to Shorty Low. But when I was doing, he was like, yo, come get the instant replay box. He just was nice. I was like, so nice. Why you give me everything? So now we laugh about it. He was like, he really didn't want to do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was like the, the role was so held that I went yeah. out there and I felt out like these guys, because I'm really just starting to meet them. Yeah. They're not the Laffy Taffy guy. They from Born yeah. Home. Yeah, they some real niggas. <laughs> these are not what the people portray like. I'm on the road with every, I'm risking my life every night on the road. These are the real deal, the real deal yeah. guys with this Laffy Taffy song. Yeah. So, I don't know how to explain that part for everybody around the world. I know y'all hear that record. That definitely what it, it wasn't that. What was it like being on the road with D4L and seeing real stuff going on though, Swamp? Life changing, mm. life changing, man. Every night, I can honestly say uh, we risk our life out there on the road. It was just as much guys as probably was just as much guns. Damn. It was the real, when we used to stand on, when they we was doing our shows, Yeah, people thought it was a game. It was life or death. <laughs> These guys, none of them was playing. Not one of them. Yeah. Not was playing, not for real. Like, so we go on to these shows and they would look at Fable and see him with his colors on. And, but he ready to flip a the script like, like this. <laughs> Cut up, yeah. You know, I toured with Fable around the world, Fable, like these guys was, I don't know how to portray it, but I don't know how to say it, but that was interesting. That road life was definitely life changing. Um, I experienced a lot with those guys. Salute to D4L, all of them. Talk to me about being in Atlanta, man, and working through these different eras and breaking records, man. What was your first record that you felt like, you know what, I had to put the Swamp Izzo stamp on that thing? Probably, um, not too much credit, but I think I was the first person to do the Maceo Hosa Down. Mm. Because they was in my, you know, they was yeah. in my vicinity. So I was. What up, though, Maceo? Not saying, not saying that I, I broke in Atlanta, yeah. but I definitely took it outside of 285. Yeah. Because I was DJing in all these other places, South Carolina and stuff. So I was putting people on to it. So yeah. breaking it that way. Not saying I was the first person to expose it to them. Exactly. But these guys was arm reach to me. Yeah. I was around them every day. Yeah. You know, they was in my crib. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Marco, all them, you know, they was with me. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. As a DJ, man, what is the most enjoyable part of it for you, though, Swamp? The money. <laughs> Let's cut past the bullshit. Can I curse? Say what you feel, Swamp. Let's cut past the bullshit. The money. The money. The money. The money. The money. I wanted to I wanted to um, keep my day job. Yeah. I was at AutoZone, but life changes and things happen. But... I always wanted to DJ or be in the music. Yeah. DJing was my first love. Of course, you know, you're trying something in life and it never works. Mm -hmm. So I was the type of person to give up. I gave up eight billion times. To be sitting here today is. My God. I gave up eight billion times. I'm the type of person who would give up. Like, as soon as it don't work, <laughs> if I say, if I came to you today and we couldn't do the interview, I'm giving up on the whole interview thing. I'm not doing it. I was just that type. Yeah. But then I got into a situation where I was homeless. Ooh. So just sleeping on the streets was. I mean, break that down though, Swamp. I mean, how does your dreams lead to you dreaming on that concrete? Dreaming too big. Ooh. Wanting to do it too, doing too much. Like they used to say back in the days, man, you doing too much. I I'm came to Atlanta with this goal, this yeah. dream, this, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I got some money. I'm moving to the city. Yeah. Came in with like twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars and yeah. end up behind Popeyes. Nice. Cause as you I'm thinking the money, I'm thinking that I got the plan to get low income housing. Yeah. Which is nothing. The apartments five, six, seven hundred dollars a month. Nothing. Yeah. Most a thousand. But I'm trying to go under a thousand. So I'm trying to move in capital homes. <laughs> You know what I'm trying to move in all those spots because I got the money. I just yeah. pace myself, get into the DJ, but I couldn't stay out of Walters. Oh, swamp was oh, fresh God. as hell. I was homeless, fresh. I couldn't stay out of Walters. I found out Walters. Yeah, I start finding these stores. Walters. Yeah, the cap mom I'm going in there like. I know I ain't got no place to stay yet. But, um, <laughs> I really want these wallabies, these sneaky these Jordans. Exactly. And I just kept doing that, blowing the money. So I'm in a hotel. I got sneakers to the in the hotel. I'm just not even thinking. Yeah. Because I'm already thinking I'm gonna be there. Like I'm like God with me. I'm on positive vibe. I can DJ. I just need to find my spot. Yeah. And I end up with everything I had in that hotel in the car. So now Swamp, you was over here homeless trying to figure it out, man. What the hell was going through your mind during that time when you had lost it all? Stupidness. I still didn't even think I lost it all. I still had um 
let me go back a little bit. Growing up, young, 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 <laughs> the young Izzo, yeah. I wanted to be a preacher. Ah. Uh. So I always had a religious vibe about me. That's right. Even when the times get worse, going to jail, yeah. I'm the first person to pray. Yeah. I could I'm the person I'm the person that would do a crime. Go against what God believes. Yeah. Get in jail and pray. I'm the first person. As soon as, they, as, soon as I sit down in the cell, I'm praying. My God. So being homeless, I just felt like, shoot, God, I'm doing right. Yeah. I'm good. I still in my mind thought tomorrow was going to be not Better. like this. Yeah. And then it went on and kept going on. They never changed. It kept just being homeless. It was no way out. So I ended up, I had the 79 Monte Carlo. Yeah. I had rims on everything because I'm, coming from a street life to trying to transition. And I was laying on the back seat. It was so hot one day. I sweated so much that I figured out that the back seat could come loose. I never knew it. So I'm sweating. I was like, damn, I sweated. I'm hot, hot. And the back seat came loose. It was like 80 cent. I went and played the lottery. With my, I'm still thinking. I'm homeless. Yeah. I'm still thinking to myself that God, you know what I mean? I got this spiritual essence and my life is supposed to be what it is. So yeah. I took, played the lottery, like 4.30, played like 50 cent, played my favorite number, 14.40, played it. Number comes out at seven. I'm like, I'm not worrying. I'm good. Yeah. I just want to make it back to South Carolina. Just yeah. give me some money, just enough to make it South. That's all. Yeah. Because I don't want to call and ask. My pride is in me. Yeah. I never asked nobody. I never bummed. I just get the money. Whatever I can eat, I get it from wherever I can eat it from. But yeah. number came out, and I lost. Shit. Now, that's when reality came <laughs> So now it's 7 o'clock. It's getting dark. Yeah. I'm hungry. I have nowhere to go but inside this car. Yeah. They tripping about where the car, the car was at the gas station. It ran hot, so the radiator was busted. <sighs> so I just took the car and just drove it behind the Popeyes. Yeah. And that's where I was sleeping at. Real life. When you look back on that time, though, Swamp, how the hell did you turn that around, man? What was the catalyst that got you from behind that Popeyes to back to where you at now? Um, I don't... At that... It's God, man. Because yeah. I, re, I don't recall... Because I wasn't a person... I was more embarrassed than anything because I left Carolina with a brand. Mm. And a name, so I couldn't call nobody. All my friends, cousins, they was super up yeah. financially. Family super up. Moms, I couldn't call and say I'm down because yeah. I'm already called leaving as this person. So I couldn't call and couldn't ask nobody. So yeah. I'm out in the elements of where it felt comfortable. At. It's nothing but people, homeless people walking around. It's like you being in the hood. It's yeah. like I was homeless with a bunch of homeless people. So it wasn't like, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like I was in a bad. I'm just out here homeless by myself. Yeah. More people walking around. Yeah. Homeless. And, so, and I, I grew up with too much what not is enough. You know what I mean? My mom was a hustler. So I grew up in that when I having a lot. So I just knew how to just not be starving. Exactly. I knew what starving was, and I wasn't starving.